FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Almond in the Morning, Common Sense Radio. Good morning, you bunch of drunks. Yes, everybody, it's 622. Talk about golf. You haven't lived until you golfed at 11,000 feet. Played golf in Colorado with my brothers and sisters, and uh, I don't, I'm not a golfer. I had to rent clubs and do all that kind of thing, but I'm not, I'm not a golfer by any stretch of the imagination. But I got sunburned, rained on, and hailed on <laughs> all within about 14 holes. We finally, uh-huh. had, and, and we finally had to abandon the round because of lightning. But... I've never been hailed on on a golf course before. While, you know, after having been sunburned because the sun was out, then suddenly the storm comes over the mountain and it's raining and hailing. <laughs> it was great, man. <laughs> Bouncing off the cart. It's like, really? Colorado's nice. They would never, ever in a million years live there. I mean, you know, I mean, it's too cool. I mean, really? In the in July '72, give me a break. It's for the. It's for. It's ridiculous. Sounds great. <laughs> All right, Anthony and Scalia. You know, we talked about the whole Second Amendment deal, which is fascinating. We'll revisit that because there's a big discussion to be had on this. Scalia, you know, he's an originalist. He's a conservative, but you'd be surprised at the doors he leaves open in terms of gun control. He does the same when he's asked by Chris Wallace about abortion. Do you hear this? It's left to democratic choice, as most things are, even important things like abortion. And when you say Democrat, that's small d, meaning let the legislature decide. Exactly, exactly. Wow, so I I have a sneaking suspicion, and I actually agree with him on this, that he believes that abortion questions ought to be best left up to states. What do you think? 969-9797-866-455-9797. It doesn't mean, and he didn't go as far as saying he believes Roe versus Wade ought to be overturned, but he believes any future kinds of uh, discussions or limitations on abortion are best left to the state, best left left to the legislature, maybe even best left to Congress. What do you think about that? 969-9797-866-455-9797. Newsweek. The cover, do you see that? It's one of the reasons why I don't get news. I'm not, I stopped getting Newsweek a long time ago because it's just a it's a leftist rag. Called essentially Romney a wimp. He was asked about it by CBS. If I, if I worried about what the media said, I'd, I wouldn't get much sleep, but I'm able to sleep pretty well. Has anyone ever called you a wimp before? I uh, don't recall that, no. Yeah, no? yeah. Romney's a wimp. Newsweek, really? And apparently they use uh, quotations from McCain. And, I mean, you know, it's really... Although I do believe that Romney was kind of wimpy when he was asked. He, he kind of sloughed off the answer, the question that was put to him, which I thought was a very reasonable question by CBS on Israel. Governor, one of your aides said this morning that you would respect Israel's decision to take military action against Iran on its own. Does that mean you're giving the green light to Israel to bomb Iran? I, let me, I'll use my own words, and, and that is I respect the right of Israel uh, to defend itself. And, uh, and we stand with, uh, with Israel. We're a, a nation, two nations that come together in, in peace and that want to see Iran. Yeah, and he went on, dis- and this went on and on and on, and he wouldn't ans- answer her directly on the matter. And he said it's because, well, I'm, a, I'm on foreign land. I don't want to inter- – I mean, come on, really? I mean, I, I just go ahead and answer the question, whether you agree with it or, or disagree with it. You see, Jay Carney was caught – by this woman who asked him a question. It didn't seem to me to be a gotcha question on what the White House sees as the capital of Israel. Did you hear this? Is this administration considered to be the capital of Israel? Jerusalem or Tel Aviv? Uh, um, I haven't had that question in a while. Our position has not changed, Connie. Can we... Uh, What's the capital? Our, you know our position now. I don't know. No, no. Jay, Jay, actually, it's Jay Carney who didn't know the White House's position. He went on. It was, a, it was actually embarrassing. It made me really uncomfortable watching Jay Carney fake like he knew the White House's position on what the capital of Israel is and knowing that he did not know actually what the White House's position on it. But to tell you the truth, I don't blame him to a certain degree because, first of all, we have the U.S. Embassy in Tel Aviv. The Knesset is in Jerusalem. Congress passed a law 
saying the U.S. Embassy ought to be moved to Jerusalem because Congress clearly at that point thought Jerusalem should be the capital. But Clinton, Bush, and Obama have all not done anything about it. So nobody really knows what the where the capital, what, what the defined capital of, of Israel is. So it could be Tel Aviv, since our U.S. Embassy is there, or as it could be the Jerusalem, since the Knesset is there, and Congress says we ought to move our U.S. Embassy there. But nobody really knows. But it's clear Jay Carney does not know the White House's position on on the uh, on the t- capital of Israel. So I thought that was fascinating. Oh, I know. I do have – I do am ridiculous sometimes because I, I – uh, sometimes I'm pretty uh, gratuitous when it comes to criticizing certain things, you know. But a, hyph- a male with a hyphenated name really bothers me. <laughs> I'm sorry, but – Maybe it depends on why, why it's hyphenated. Why, why would, would it be would... hyphenated? Exactly. Well, yeah, I would like to know why it's hyphenated. Because you're like a girl. That's why. Oh. Hyphenated name. A guy. Anyway, this guy is Manuel Roy Gafranzia. I can't wait to get him on the air either. He wrote a book about Marco Rubio, The Rise of Marco Rubio or whatever it is called, and it's a biography. And he tells this story about Nancy Reagan. Remember when Nancy Reagan fell or whatever it is? Here's the whole, here it is. He gets invited to this event at the Reagan Library, and he's escorting Nancy Reagan down the aisle, and she trips. And then with the cameras rolling, he reaches down and grabs her. It's like this great save. Everybody goes wild. The conservative blogs are calling him a hero. He's the heir, heir apparent. Uh, but there was something interesting. I, I called Ron Reagan the son of Nancy Reagan. And I said, did you see this? And, and, and I'm working on this book about Marco Rubio. And he said, oh, Marco Rubio, the guy who dropped my mom. So it was just an interesting <laughs> Different viewpoints. You saw the conservative love fest and the family thinking of it a little bit differently. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's the most fascinating part of that is that he thinks he decides that Ron Reagan is the Reagan family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He that's, talks to one member of the family. And he goes to one apparently. member of the family and he says that's the family's position on Marco Rubio and the Nancy Reagan falling thing. That really tells you everything you need to know about how biased this guy is in his approach to Marco Rubio. He has a new book out. I'm going to get him on the air, and I'm going to ride him like a rented mule. How does that sound? <laughs> Carl, get this. Uh, Hyphenated name. Manuel <laughs> Roy Franzia on the air immediately. Let's get him on. Well, you can't do it immediately, but let's book him. Book him, Dano. All right, coming up, Sarah Palin. Dick Cheney says it was a mistake to... Uh, Get her on that McCain ticket. And CNN decides they're kind of going to pile on the whole anti-Sarah Palin deal in a way that uh, you'll find quite offensive straight ahead.